It's in the trees. It's coming. Hello internet, it's Suze. I'm gonna give you my Edinburgh diary because I didn't do video diaries every day. Didn't do them at all. So for the last month, uh, I have been doing Defying Gravity. Here's my fabulous flyer designed by Lawrence Owen with pictures by Darren Bell. I can spare this one just about because I've only got about 4,000 left. And only about 25 posters. Ooh, big green face. I did my show last year for one performance. The show was called Suzical, and once I'd done it, I knew that I wanted to come back this year with a full hour. There were rewrites and structurings, and I started previewing in March. In April, I had a particularly disastrous preview, and it was watched by um, a director. Uh, literally, we, we sort of talked about it for a couple of hours, and suddenly I had a whole new show. I then previewed that show from May to July. Then I took it to the fringe. I was in Fingers Piano Bar, and we'll hear about how everything went as this goes along. Day one, I'm driving up from uh, Lawrence Owen and Lindsay Sharman's flat in Kilford. I've got in my car all my stuff. A pink castle made out of cardboard for Elf Lions. Lawrence's guitar and amp. Lindsay's books. Oh yeah, it took me eight hours. This like will sound like a joke, but genuinely the first five and a half hours flew by. I had a, a little chef Olympic breakfast on the way up. Mm. I arrived at the flat around half three. It was brilliant. Um, good sized rooms, good everything. Only a 20 minute walk into town. Thumbs up. Went down to the Pleasance Courtyard, instantly was offered free tickets for the first performance of News Review. The cast are amazing. There was uh, an incredible Frozen parody starring Nick Clegg. Uh, but you want that, so I won't make it not funny by describing it. Day two, I arrived at Fingers Piano Bar with uh, my projector, my screen, my pewter, my keyboard and its stand. So it basically went, hey, I'm Suze, good to meet you, it's my first fringe. And they went, yeah, you're not leaving that stuff here. And then he said, why have you bought a piano? But first of all, were amazing, they sorted it all out. I don't think the guy who runs Fingers ever quite forgave me. Uh, having lots of stuff, but never mind. I made up for it by being obnoxiously nice to him the entire month, which, uh, I don't know if it made him more or, less, more or less annoyed. Also, that day had my first uh, Edinburgh rain. It took till the second day for that to happen. Day three, first show, ah! My panic leading up to the fringe had mainly been because my show is was quite a risk, it's quite a personal show, it's got songs from Wicked in it, so that's not very comedy friendly, but it's also not exactly made for people who only want to hear Wicked songs. Uh, and luckily I had this full house um, who really enjoyed the show. It couldn't have gone better. Day four was uh, Lawrence and Lindsay's first shows and I had a bit at the beginning of Lindsay's show where I would sing an operatic Disney pastiche thing and uh, she would mime to it. So I did that and then went and did my second show and then it was Lawrence's first show and I stayed and watched that and uh, we'd all done shows. Day five, Jade Adams arrived and then the party could really start because there was so much delicious breakfast. Oh. And I had an insane audience for my third show. It was really fun. It was really, really fun. Uh, Ellie Taylor came and uh, the guy who runs Fingers afterwards, he went, not a bad show, which I think means I won him over. A day off, uh, so I went early-ish, queued for Ellie Taylor's show, but they had to turn more than half the people away because she's so popular. I also saw Massive Dad in the Pleasance Courtyard, one of the best sketch shows I've ever seen. It was brilliant. And then I went to see Luke McQueen. I didn't think it could be as hilarious and brilliant as last year. It was even better. Even better. And that is my pick of the fringe. Pick of the fringe. Day seven, my fourth show. I did have this audience who was so offended by my show. There's a bit in my show where I say, hey guys, I'm always getting mistaken for Anne Frank. And this room full of people all went, oh my God. They were literally, there were people looking around them like, how can we get out without her just stabbing us as we leave? They were so offended, so the mood in the room when I got to my Jimmy Savile song was fantastic. But it just shows you that Edinburgh audiences can change every show. I never had one like that again, thank goodness. Also, in EastEnders that night, Danny Dyer swam the length of a swimming pool um, while Katy Perry's Roar played in the background, and I cried. That happened. Day eight, I watched a place beyond the pines to relax that morning. I'd had it downloaded for a while, I was like, 
Ah, time to chill. Yeah, not a good film to watch if you want to just have a little chill out. I uh, then went to my show, we were back in business. Back in business. Great audience, great. Um, also that night went with the old bro, Luke Kempner, we went to see Alan Davis at the EICC. I don't know, are you meant to say it, EICC, or are you meant to say the Edinburgh International Conference Centre? Or is this some cool way of saying it like, yeah, the down of the conference, down at the conference sen. I don't know, that's where I went to see it, it was great. Day nine, I had a reviewer in, ah! It wasn't like one of the national papers or anything, but it was still fairly terrifying. I got four stars. That reviewer, the public reviews gave me four stars. It was a musical comedy awards pick of the Fringe at the Cow Barn, which I'd done in 2010. And at that point, it was the greatest nine minutes of my life. This year, it was more like three and a half minutes because I had to hot foot it from that show to okay. my show, um, which is about a 20 minute walk across town. Okay. Or if you Suze Kentner, a 14 minute sprint in heels, um, and I tore something in my lower calf, but it was worth it because I loved doing that show again at the Cow Barn. Near our flat is a co-op and uh, Lawrence saw a really sad dog outside. I got fired from Lindsay's show. Um, she found a better way to open it. I was no longer part of Team Shaman, but I'm not an ego guy, there's anything for the good of the show. All that remains of what I did in that show now is this recording. Boredom of your Monday night from tedium and misery and pain and stress. I went to see Devolution, that's another show that Theatre Bench are producing. Oh my god, fantastic! Ian Strohair as Vermicelli and Christina Bianco. Just incredible, brilliant impressions, unbelievable singing, fantastic. I hope um, it gets a London run because. Uh. Then in the evening, I did a painted grin, but Jade was away, so I was doing it with lovely Stephen Bailey. You were faced with this audience of people who were just like, no, no. They just they wanted nothing that we had to offer. They just sat there catatonic. So we did the show. We ended up with enough in the bucket at the end that shared between us could get us a McDonald's each and a taxi home, which, to be honest, felt like a winner. That morning I got a message from Lloyd Griffith saying, hey, would you like to be a backing singer for Nick Helm's show at the Pleasant Scrand? Now, I bloody love Nick Helm. I already had tickets uh, for the show, but I was going to go see it with my brother. So instead of having a day off, I um, rehearsed these two songs. There were six of us in the backing kind. And then in the evening we just showed up and did the show. Maybe the fact it was so last minute and unexpected, I get to be on stage at the Pleasance Grand, but with comedians that I really respect. It was it was incredible, it was such a buzz. Um, genuine, one of the best shows I've ever seen, loved it. I like, started watching The Wire. I was, Whoa. so I had this weird sort of thing where I was marathon watching The Wire, and then I went and did my show. The audience, the audience at my show that day were ridiculous. They were so excited, but then there were three quite angry looking women in the second row who just looked annoyed. I thought, stop trying to make them laugh, Sue, it's not going to work. End of the show, they came up to say how much they'd enjoyed it and bought CDs off me, so I guess they just looked like this. One of them was like, but maybe she was just hot. Uh-oh, my brother was coming to watch. Some have said my toughest critic. No one has said that. He came, it was actually quite a small audience that day, but they were small but mighty. I loved it. It was a brilliant atmosphere. Sarah Jane Price was there. Good at her. Went to see Gabby Best's show at um, Assembly Studios George Square. She has more writing talent in her little finger than I have uh, in my entire brain. I have to read out emails my dad sent to make shows. <coughs> then it was time for my show and I had this terrified audience. They were kind of, oh, oh. this angry couple just got up and stormed out, possibly because the guy had been reading a map at the beginning. I pointed out like this, I went, bloke, they're just reading a map. And people kind of laughed and he put the map away really angrily and then was murmuring to his wife and then after about 20 minutes they just stormed out. Bit of a shame though, because Bob Broad was there and I really wanted Bob Broad to uh, think the show was good, but he must have sat there thinking, what is this? And then I went bowling with Craig Christie and I scored 32 points, which I think is pretty close to a perfect game. Is that what they call it? I'm basing this on The Simpsons. Holy shit, The Wire. I was up to the end of season three by now. Things have got pretty incredible. And then went to do my show and I, uh oh, <laughs> I didn't have a bad, a bad audience at all, they were, they were enjoying it, but um, 
two women stormed out after the same bit that people had stormed out the previous day, um, which is a bit about dapper laughs. I think they're big fans. And luckily, like, luckily the mood in the audience was pretty good. Um, but then three women got up and left, like, during the end song. And I said, girls, don't get up and go to the toilet. It's obviously nearly the end. And one of them went, we're not, we're going. I called them stingy fuckers and got a big laugh. I think you can have a go at an audience so long as you don't actually feel annoyed because I didn't and I think that's how I got away with it. I think that's how Jade Adams' whole act works. It's just people go, she's not really annoyed. Good old Jade. I then uh, got to judge the funny women Edinburgh semi-final. I got right into it though, I was like, bloody useless. No, I didn't. I wrote positive things for everyone because after all, they're all semi-finalists. Massive Dad won and they were Great. 18. Oh, no angry walkouts. Audience is really enjoying it. Back on track. The phone's ringing. Ah, I don't answer the phone in this house. Hello. Your, Your call, call can't, can't be taken, taken at the moment. moment. Alex Young arrived. Alex Young arrived. Something that I've discovered I like doing is sharing a bed with Alex Young. So the next five nights were pretty much jackpot for old Suze. Oh wow, day 20. It was my day off. Alex and I went to see uh, Rachel Stubbing's show, doing it for himself. More impressive writing, it was amazing and brilliantly performed. And we found a, I don't know it's because it's just me and Alex are a pair of old hams, but we found ourselves getting quite moved by it all. Oh my god. And Moam, sweet, bloody good job on those. Also, at Rachel Stubbing's show, Daniel Kitson was there. You sat behind me. It was at the other belly. We stayed there to watch Jos Norris as well, uh, which was equally amazing. Um, that guy. I took her in the evening to see Luke McQueen. Uh, Lindsay Norris came too. Amazing. And I had a great show on this day. Um, and then afterwards, like a bunch of people wanted to give me hugs. No, none of them knew each other. They were just like, "Come here," and they hugged me, which made me feel like a real special girl. And a guy called David Levitt did a video blog um, about my show, uh, and he said this. But this show was freaking phenomenal. This chick killed it. It was so funny. It was a whole routine about her life, and um, uh, she sang some songs from Wicked. It was called Defying Gravity. I just, like, flashed that poster real quick because uh, people were coming out, and I didn't want them to get in the way and be awkward. Um, uh, but it was a lot just about her life and a lot about her dad, who was, like, this ridiculous... Uh, angry, mean person, and there's a part where she reads an email from him that has just like all of these grammatical errors and spelling errors, and her commentary on it was really funny. Maybe you're not getting anything from my explanation, but it was just a really funny stand-up routine. Also, she could wail. Um, uh, he means this is the sing. second time I've heard someone sing Defying Gravity here. The first one was Miranda Sings, so that like half counts. Yeah. We on day 22? I think day 22. Uh, went to see Bridget Christie with Alex, and um, Bloody Kitson was there again. I have good taste if Daniel Kitson keeps showing up at shows I like. Bridget's show was um, in much the same vein as last year's show, um, but somehow it was even better. It, even better show, I um, loved it. I met up with my soon-to-be-wed friends, Amanda and Dave, and I was just scrolling through my Twitter, because I'm rude and I look at my phone when I'm with my friends. Um, and I got a four-star review from Chortle. I hadn't invited them to see the show. I didn't know they were in. Yeah, four stars. Couldn't believe it. I then went and did my show. Uh, the guy who runs my venue had dropped my projector the previous day. And, like, the bulb and projector is three colours, and I think the green one had busted. So everything on my screen was showing up pink. And there were two girls at the back who would just chat, 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 chat. No matter what I said to them, they would just go, whoop. Um, like chat 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 and I went girls girls stop talking and they went ha ha and just went back to chatting and eventually I said girls girls what are your names and that shut them up for about a minute in the end they left and it was raining so gutted but despite all of that it somehow managed to be one of the best shows of the run so far I don't know how this happened it was a good show I wish I'd filmed it 23 I had a really uh, good show this day as well my mum was there for the first time um, and it went really well. Then we went to see, uh, then we went to see Luke McQueen, and just like last year, my mum cried with laughter. <laughs> you no, know she's seen a good show, and afterwards she's going, "Oh, my jaws are aching." That is her real voice. Uh, Alex went home, so I was alone again in my bed. Basically, there's a bit of my show where I reference 
a show jumper from the 90s called Milton. I remember it because I sort of quite a horsey person. Huh? But he's not like Red Rum, he's not famous like that. And I go in the show and there was a show jumper when I was a little kid called Milton and someone in the audience went, yeah, man in the audience, he'd just been waiting for someone to reference Milton. I'd done my show, it was okay. I'd made it through all but the last two shows without having a dodgy voice and the last two shows it was like, oh, touch and go. That night I had a duet, but it was me and Velma Celli, this duet of the show must go on that we were going to do. We talked through it, sort of went, yeah, well, here, yeah, right, okay. And then um, we just went on stage and did it. And I bloody loved it. It was in no way my greatest singing performance, so I'll say that much, but it was really fun. Really, really fun. Damn, Velma Celli got pipes, man. <laughs> John Kearns, who won Best Newcomer last year, he won the Foster's Award this year, um, dude's a hero. And then that night we went to see Quint Fontana, good old Andy Davis, who survived last year, we did a play together, and he survived me having to be sexy with him. Few men have survived that, he managed to survive it. We went to see his show, the Quint Fontana show, I Remember Me. It was a real scream, you guys. I saw John Kearns. This is me congratulating someone who's just won essentially Best Actor Oscar, but comedy. John's so modest, he just went like that. Comedians. Day of my last show, but not only the day of my last show, it was the day of Amanda and Dave's wedding. What did Suze do on that day? Did she go and watch the wedding? Plan was that I was going to drive to the wedding, it's an hour and a half from um, my flat, it was in Pit Lockery. I was going to drive there, watch the wedding, rush back, do my show and then go back for the evening. Went down to my car that morning, couldn't find my keys. There was a note on the windscreen, basically the previous day I had got something out of my car and left the keys in it. Someone very kindly had picked up the keys and left their number. Possibly the most stupid thing I've ever done. And I was in all my dress, my mum was there in her dress, we were ready to go. I rang the number, left on the thing and the, this guy was like, oh yeah, I have your keys but I won't be back till eight. And I was like, eight? I have to go to a wedding. And he went, I'll call you at eight, bye. I wasn't gonna see them get married. So I just sat all day in the flat in my dress like a jilted bride. And I did my show, my very last show. It was insane, to be honest. There were quite a lot of foreign people in there who just looked at me baffled. But I didn't know they were foreign, so I just kept going, oh, why aren't you laughing? <laughs> and then I realised they were foreign. Uh, there were people enjoying it, but what a show to go out on. Anyway, I went back with mum to the flat and we were gonna wait for this guy to call with the keys at eight. Eight came and went, half eight, I called. He went, I'll be about another hour. Okay, <laughs> sat and waited and then he finally rang at 10 p.m. So we had the keys. So we went and got them, drove to the wedding. We were there at half 11. The wedding was on for another hour. And then we drove back to Edinburgh. When I arrived, I went to the bar, which was taking last orders, got a double archers, downed it, got on the dance floor. I tried to do a whole wedding in an hour, and I did. Congratulations, Dave and Amanda. She looked beautiful, he looked beautiful. There's no evidence that I look like anything at all because no pictures of me in my dress exist. I'm going home. I went for my final breakfast with mum. I got a big steak at Weatherspoons. You can get them at 10 in the morning. I went and collected my stuff from Fingers Piano Bar, you know, projector screen, piano, etc. I was a little bit worried that the guy who ran Fingers was going to try and give me a hug. Turns out, needn't have worried. Literally sort of went by and then just went back in. I think maybe he was worried I was going to turn anything he said into a show. And then the journey home, 445 miles. It took nine and a half hours because fuck you M6. But it did mean I got to be reunited with... I can't find the cat that loves me. I can only find the one that hates being picked up. She's so happy that I'm home. Yeah, piss off it. So here I am, a whole month of Edinburgh shows under my belt and 4,000 leftover flyers. And here is what I have learned. Number one, 
do not spend money on posh flyers. You can have a really nice looking flyer, what happens is you give it to someone and they sort of go meh, and they'll either fold it up and put it in their pocket, or they'll put it in the bin. I had these little postcard flyers, they're basically the cheapest option. Like, you can spend a lot of money on flyers, but apparently you just don't need to. Number two, do spend time thinking of a good image. I had a head start because I knew I wanted to call the show Define Gravity. There's like, there's like nothing artistic about me. All I could think of was, well just me as Alphabet, yeah? Darren Bell took this great picture. That's me with my face painted with normal foundation mixed with green food colouring, genuinely. Photoshop and Darren Bell did the rest. Lawrence made this flyer which really sells it. I'm so unartistic that when he said, here's the flyer design, I said, what made you come up with using the wicked font? But he was like, what else would I have done? <laughs> and the fringe brochure is massive and you only get this tiny little window for a picture. It's, it's a happy accident by think having like in a tight little box. It made it stand out from the page and I think that's why I got decent audiences. And uh, yeah, only a handful of people stormed out of the show furious, so. And my third tip would be don't go to the fringe with really high expectations. We all have that daydream where you win the Foster's Award and you get picked up for your own sketch show and you get five star reviews across the board. That's really nice, but you can't really go to the fringe expecting that. I'm, I'm always quite down on myself and that is not a good thing. Um, but it did mean I went into my first Edinburgh thinking, well, as long as I get sort of ten people in a day and they enjoy it, then I'll have had a, what I consider a successful fringe. And when inviting people to come and see the show, I didn't even bother with big national papers or the Scotsman um, or Chortle because I just didn't see the point, they wouldn't come anyway. So to have big audiences, often full houses, um, and then have Chortle just come and see me um, unannounced blew my tiny mind. But if I'd come to the Fringe thinking, oh, I think I'm going to get Best Newcomer, then I would have still gone home disappointed. Which leads me on to my next tip, which is don't expect big amazing breaks from the Fringe, but certainly work towards them because if things do go wrong, you don't have to blame yourself, you can blame everyone else, and that's my favourite thing to do. And now I've got a tip about accommodation, okay? Now, it's entirely up to you, like maybe you want to be in the centre of town, whatever, like I was a 20 minute walk from town, that was fine for me. But one thing I will say is, just get somewhere with broadband. Oh my god, there was no Wi-Fi at my house. I got a dongle, that wasn't very good. I did the thing where you tether your phone to make a personal hotspot. That wasn't very good either. You could just about watch EastEnders on it. Having been away for a month, I've got home and I'm using my home's broadband. And it was so fast, I was marvelling at it, like I was stig of dump. That's my Edinburgh 2014. I did it. It was brilliant, it was amazing. I've made uh, great friends really good contacts, I got good reviews, I got good audiences. I was a little naive going into it because I thought, well if I have a successful fringe I think that's going to sort out everything else in my life, which like it hasn't been the case because I think I'd be a pretty shallow person if having a good fringe show uh, fixed stuff, fixed other stuff. But I'm certainly incredibly grateful to everyone who helped me um, get my show at the fringe. I've already thanked Lawrence and Darren for <laughs> which I think did half the work for me. I want to thank everyone at Freestable for taking a chance on me and giving me such a great venue for my first Fringe show. I want to thank everyone at Fingers Piano Bar. The sound there is second to none. Best sound on the Fringe, hands down. I want to thank Jim and Matthew and everyone at Theatre Bench for their support. My brother for letting me make fun of his show in my show. Not that he had a choice. And everyone who came to see it, thank you so much. The show is definitely going to have another couple of showings in London and I don't know what's next but I do know that I can't wait for 2015's Edinburgh where I will be doing my characters and 2015's video will basically just be me going, ah, why did I try and go back? What did I bloobity think I was doing?